Hey, it's Apollo. Welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new. My name is Kayla, and today I have a very niche video for you, but I'm very, very excited about it. Hey guys, hello, welcome back, or welcome to the channel if you're new. Like I said, today's content is a little bit niche. If you guys have been watching my channel for any, like, period of time, you would know that Harry Potter is potentially one of the most important things in my life. It's a really big part of my personality. Like, honestly, Harry Potter is, like, a personality trait for me, and I'm sure you guys know people like that in your life as well, but I thought it'd be fun to sort of integrate harry potter into my love for vintage fashion now i actually did a reel not too long ago maybe like six months ago ish where i styled vintage outfits for each harry potter hogwarts house so i'm gonna be doing a similar thing today and then i'm also gonna be styling a fifth outfit i like to use five as the number of outfits i put together so because there's only four hogwarts houses i also wanted to put together a fifth outfit and i think this is gonna be really fun it's gonna be a death eater but if they were a member of the 80s goth scene. <laughs> and now, without further ado, let's jump in to the very first outfit, which is my house, Gryffindor. And we are Gryffindor. This outfit is so freaking cute. I am gonna wear this all the time. This is the kind of clothes I do wear in real life, um, so I will absolutely be wearing an outfit like this. This is actually based on a 1940s outfit, so we've got a 1940s look going on here. So let me just walk you through everything. We'll start from the top and work our way down. So first I have my hair. Now, I'm not a hairstylist. I'm honestly not great at styling hair in general, but I did like a little roll looking thing here and then I did roll my hair a little bit and pinned it. I looked at a bunch of different pictures of 1940s women's hairstyles and most of them are quite short. Now my hair is not really short, it's actually pretty long, um, so I wasn't really sure what to do with all of my hair um, and then when I looked up long hairstyles, even the long hair was like much shorter than mine. So I saw one long hairstyle that was, of course, like I said, shorter than mine, but what she did was she had her hair sort of like rolled in the back and then had the little roll here. And then of course her hair was like permed, so it was like nice and floofy. My hair is not doing that. Um, it's not permed. And I curled it, but it didn't stay. So <laughs> this is what we're working with. Um, but I actually really, really like this hairstyle. I feel like it's kind of a cool sort of intersection of modern and historical hair. So it's, like I said, not historically accurate, but sort of my modern take on a 1940s hairdo. But moving on down, I have on this white blouse here. Now, actually, my friend over on Instagram, Alyssa, she actually sent this to me in the mail. She was going through a closet. She was getting rid of a couple of things. She saw this, thought I might like it, and she sent it to me. And it's potentially my new favorite white shirt. It's so beautiful. And the, like, detailing on it is just gorgeous this is actually almost identical to the reference photo i looked at and so i think this shirt works really really well for this 1940s outfit then this skirt right here is from briggs new york but i thrifted this at a goodwill it is just in this lovely maroonish color uh gryffindor's colors are sort of this dark red and a yellowy gold color so went with this skirt here this works so well for this the length is very very modest and that's very indicative of the 1940s and 50s and 30s as well and I, it is actually a vintage skirt i don't believe it's from the 1940s but it definitely is vintage so who knows when it is from moving on down i have actually some harry potter gryffindor socks on that i think i got at target a while ago and then i have my new oxfords now i don't know how many students would be wearing heels they might be wearing like the flat versions, which I do have flat versions of these. They're just broken and these ones are not. So I wanted to wear these ones. But also these are new and I'm not sure that I've showed them to you guys on video yet. So I figured I would show them to you guys in this outfit here. These are from Charlie Stone Shoes. Their shoes are a bit expensive, but they're really freaking high quality. And if you catch them on a sale, they're definitely worth it. I got these on sale and it was, I think they were like $60 on sale, so that was a great deal, especially since it's like a slow fashion type of company, so everything is much more expensive. Oh, and of course I have my wand. This my coworkers actually bought for me. They all got together and picked out a wand for me and gifted it to me um, because they know how important Harry Potter is to me. And Harry Potter is like a really big thing that we all bond over in our office, so 
it was just like a really very thoughtful gift because they picked one that matched my personality and so this is my personalized wand <laughs> now i was thinking it might be interesting to throw this tie on i do have like the gryffindor tie i don't know necessarily how regularly ties were worn in the 1940s but i did find a couple of reference photos of people wearing like school uniforms where they did have ties on so let's just throw this on and see what if it adds anything to it Not gonna lie, I kind of like how this looks. So I just did a double Windsor knot on my tie. There are a couple of different types of knots you can do for a tie. This is just the one my dad taught me to do when I was really young. Um, so <laughs> this is a double Windsor knot. Um, I absolutely freaking think this is cute. This looks like a school uniform to me, like a vintage school uniform. I think this looks so adorable. I would love to know what you guys think. Is this like a school uniform type of outfit, like a vintage school uniform look? It looks like it to me. I also kind of feel a little bit like, like a librarian or like a secretary or something, but I still think it's a cute outfit. This is definitely something I would wear. I don't generally wear ties, but hear me out. We should bring back the ties for women because why not? I think they're kind of fun. They look cool. It's just like a fun accessory. It's a nice little place where you can just flash your personality a bit. So I think this is cool. I really like this outfit. So this is look number one. This is the Gryffindor outfit. So let's head over to Hufflepuff. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. This is the outfit I struggled with the most, but this would be an outfit inspired by a lot of the outfits worn in like the late 60s and 70s. So this is what I got going here. Um, this is just a good classic 1960s, 1970s-ish style summer outfit. I guess we can start from the bottom, work our way down as usual. So first I have my hair in the ever so classic late 60s, early 70s center part. This was a very popular hairstyle among the flower children. I felt like I absolutely had to put my hair like this. I thought it was Perfect for Hufflepuffs who I feel like are kind of like the flower children of Hogwarts houses if that makes sense So I put my hair up like this. I wish I had like some sort of yellow flower crown I feel like that could have been really fun though I will say I don't think that this outfit necessarily is what the hippies would have been wearing I think this is more or less what the average person was wearing as opposed to those who were a part of like the hippie peace and love sort of movement I actually saw so many reference pictures with people just wearing skirts just like this pleated skirts uh, tennis skirts which are once again very popular and then either just like t-shirts with small cute types of details on them or tank tops just like this oftentimes they were button up tank tops i didn't have any button front ones so i just went with this silk one that i have which so i guess we're moving on down i have on this silk tank top that i thrifted forever ago to be honest it doesn't fit super well anymore my chest has sort of outgrown the shirt a little bit um so i don't often wear it that much but i still think it's a very very cute shirt also just to go back up to backtrack for a second i threw on these little flower earrings that I have on my Etsy shop. There's actually a pair still available. I thought that they worked so perfectly to again sort of tie in that sort of flower power type of feeling and then also they're this beautiful goldish yellow color that works so perfectly for Hufflepuff. Moving down I have this skirt here that I also thrifted. I got this one I think on thread up. I actually got this skirt when I dressed like Beth Harmon from the Queen's Gambit. I did, I think, a lookbook for that, and that show is actually based in the 1960s as well. So obviously this is working out well for that. I just love this skirt so much. It's so cute. And again, this is about the shortest length I like to go with skirts. It's mostly covering my knees, but they're just slightly peeking out, and that's pretty much like the shortest I like to go with skirts. Also, when I was thinking about shoes, the 60s, the 70s, they're just like this wondrous time for shoes and footwear. Go-go uh, -go boots, I am still on the hunt for a pair that will fit my wide calves, but for now, a different style of shoe I saw that was very popular was the wide-topped mule, just like these. The mules I did see didn't necessarily have this intricate embroidery design on them like the ones I'm wearing, but these are just the ones I had, so I decided to thread them on, even though I don't think I would necessarily generally pair these particular shoes with this shirt. The colors are not really in the same family. These are much brighter and these are much more neutral, sort of muted. So I probably wouldn't 
generally pair them together but to sort of get the point across i decided to check them on but overall i'm actually pretty happy with how this outfit turned out like i said hufflepuff was the hardest one by far for me to put together i just kept doing it over and over again i think i tried on like six outfits or something and this was the one i landed on so you'll have to let me know what you think do we like the hufflepuff look is it hufflepuff enough so uh, let's head over to slytherin <laughs> And just like that, not only are we a Slytherin, but we're also living in the 80s. <laughs> so if you guys have been following me for a few years, you would know. I used to be super, super into 80s fashion, and honestly, this is making me second guess why I stopped wearing a bunch of my 80s stuff. But this here is a suit set that I thrifted, but this type of outfit is almost identical to the types of fits I was seeing in all the reference photos for 1980s sort of, I looked up specifically 1980s women's workwear and this is what we got. So maybe I'm a Slytherin working at the Ministry of Magic sporting my house colors and I could wear this to work. And also I thought that this was the absolute perfect opportunity to use this shirt here that I got from Hot Topic that has all of this Hogwarts and Harry Potter inspired embroidery. So let me walk you through this outfit from the top to the bottom. First of all, I went and backcombed my hair to make it like a little bit bigger. My hair is generally like very, very flat. So I went and backcombed it a little bit. It was bigger five minutes ago, but again, humidity. So it's not quite as big anymore, but I still think it looks pretty cool. And of course, big hair is sort of the staple of 80s hairdos. Um, and of course, perms were a really, really popular thing. Of course, I don't have one. So my hair is not gonna be as big as it would be if maybe I slept on curlers or if I, you know, had a perm. So hair, moving on down, I have on, like I said, my Harry Potter shirt here. It's just a white Peter Pan collared shirt that buttons all the way up. It's got some Hogwarts inspired, Harry Potter inspired embroidery. I think on this side is the castle. On this side is the Hogwarts crest. And then you have the sorting hat, then some wands and the book stars. So I have this cute little shirt on. I felt like it was the perfect moment to wear it. And then of course, the star of the show, this 1980s suit, this is vintage. I'm pretty certain it's actually from the 80s. And it is just in this very trendy sage green color. This whole set is just adorable. I absolutely love it. And I hate to admit that I've never worn this whole set together. I think I thought that the sleeves were too short, but they're literally not. So I don't know why I thought that they were. Um, but I'm obsessed with this suit and I think it's so cute and honestly, I would wear this in everyday life Like I do like dressing up in everyday life though. I think I would absolutely actually wear this So yeah, I got this green suit jacket on then of course the pencil skirt This is one of two pencil skirts that I own so it's a nice little piece I don't ever really wear, but <laughs> I'm starting to get more comfortable in pencil skirts, so I think that I'll definitely, I'm moving forward, maybe look at getting some more. This is knee length, which is so perfect for me. It also came with this really cool belt right here, which just immediately reminded me of Bellatrix Lestrange's vault, covered in gold and all of the different fanciful things that she had either found, earned, or stolen. Most likely, most of that is the latter. Um, so I don't know, I just thought it was like a cool little detail. And then I did just throw on some heels. If I had black heels, I think that would have worked better, like a black strappy heel. But the only pair of heels that I have that have black on them, I have two pairs and one is mostly a cream pair with a black like sort of toe area. And then the other pair is houndstooth. So I didn't really feel like they worked well with this outfit, nor did I feel like they were very 80s inspired. But these are the types of shoes or at least a similar type of shoe to the one that I saw in reference photos. These I actually got at Target. They're very comfortable, though it takes some time to break in the back of it. I definitely got blisters the first time I wore these shoes to a wedding, so definitely takes some time to wear in. But overall, I think this is super cute, and I think this works super well for a 1980s sort of businesswoman look. And if you're like, you know, a Slytherin ministry lady, bada bing, bada boom, you're repping your house and also rocking work in style. Okay, so now let us move on to Ravenclaw. <laughs> We are a Ravenclaw. So if you couldn't tell, this is a 1950s summer outfit. So I actually literally looked up 1950s women's summer outfit and this was very, this is very, very similar to what I was able to find. So when I was looking, I was able to find sort of like a gingham pattern shirt like this. Now mine is tucked under my bra because the shirt in the reference photo was quite cropped just like this. Whereas this shirt is like a full length shirt. So obviously it's not quite the same, but 
but I did tuck mine up to sort of give it that illusion, a little bit of midriff showing. And then the skirt in the reference photo was solid, but I had this polka dotted one and I thought this was a fun way to like mix prints as well. I don't really know how popular that was in the 1950s, but again, I thought it was like a cool little modern take on a 1950s look. Now, if I had bowling shoes, I would put those on because I feel like those really would go well with this but I don't have any, or Mary Janes, which were also really popular in the 1950s. So I did just throw on my heeled Oxfords, once again, from Charlie Stem. The skirt here I got from Forever 21, the plus section, like four or five years ago, so very unlikely that it's still around. And then this shirt here is from Old Navy, actually last summer. And like I said, I just tucked it up. Then I also have on this three-layered pearl thing. Pearls are super popular um, in all of the 1950s sort of reference photos. So these are from Amazon. I got them when I did a cosplay of Audrey Hepburn. <laughs> and then these are my in route X best dress earrings on here. Her earrings were inspired by vintage sort of silhouettes. And because they had the little pearl detail, I thought they worked really nicely for this. Then for my hair, I attempted to do a little like, you know, like the bump it, sort of like the more toned down version of that so I attempted to put like a little bit of a bump in the front of my hair I'm not sure that it really worked that well but I do think that the hair looks pretty cute nonetheless you can see a little bit of the curl action happening back there from earlier and then I just threw in this little white like cloth that I had in my hair to add a little accessory ponytails were really popular style in the 1950s also red lips were really popular in the 1950s so I threw on a red lip as well this is the Ravenclaw outfit what do you guys think so I guess the last outfit we need to put on is our punk rock Death Eater look. Um, okay, so first of all, I did put this cloak on. This is my grandma's. It belonged to her when she was alive. And I sort of use this for a ton of different cosplays that I do. It's beautiful. She made it herself. It's like a very heavy duty cloak and honestly it drapes so wonderfully. It reminds me so so much of the actual Death Eater sort of cloaks that they had. The only difference is this one doesn't have a hood. I thought this was like a cute little accessory. But barring the cloak, let's take that off really quickly. I'll show you the rest of the outfit, which is much more wearable, albeit all black. Starting from the top, we'll work our way down. First of all, I looked up a bunch of different 1960s hairstyles just to try to figure out if there was something that I could try to do and the massive bump it that was really popular but like the bump in the back so I attempted to do that it I'm sure looks like a hot mess in the back but I sort of added some volume to the back of my head and then put a layer of hair over top of it as well and then most of the time that hairstyle was paired with sort of like swoopy curled bangs I don't have bangs so I just like took two little side pieces of my hair out and put it to the sides. The middle part as well was super popular. Generally, I don't like myself in middle parts, but I kind of have to say, I've never felt cooler. This whole outfit just feels really freaking cool. And I feel as if I could be in a punk rock band in like present day. So moving down from the hair, um, right here I have this wand here. This my dad actually made for me. This is my Bellatrix Lestrange wand, handmade by my dad. Really cool, this is just like a fun thing and we stained it and everything. And I tried to do some like carving because her wand has some rune looking symbols on the side. So I did try to carve the sides. I didn't do a great job, but yeah, I still think this is a really cool thing to have. Then moving down, I actually have on one of my dad's ties. So this is almost identical to an outfit that I saw. The only difference is, is that she had sort of like Mary Janes on and I do not own Mary Janes as I've said before. So I went for Converse. They were really popular in the 50s. So I'm sure people were still wearing them in the 60s. Um, I also have my Doc Martens and I thought maybe I could put those on, but I wasn't really sure how popular combat boots were within the goth scene. I put on my dad's tie and I added some pins. So this one here is actually from To Hunt a Killer. Um, our family does it as like a big family sort of weekend project. We have like a murder board and everything. Like we full on go hard with To Hunt a Killer. It's so much fun. And then this one here, I got from, I think, the bookish shop in their subscription box, and it has, like, a wand and magic spewing out of it, and so I thought it was a relevant detail that kind of tied in, and this one just was, like, creepy and reminded me a little bit of the dark mark. Then I also have on just a plain black tank top here. This was just from Target or Walmart or one of the two, probably Walmart, and then this skirt here I got from Boohoo about five or six years ago, and I've had it for so, so long. It's just a black little pinafore skirt, and like I said, this whole part right 
right here identical to the reference photo that I found. I also threw on some tights. I just have, you know, textured tights on. I thought that they added a cool little something something to the fit. But overall, this is what I would imagine a Death Eater would wear if they were a 1960s goth. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Which was your favorite outfit? Um, not to be biased or anything, but my favorite was the Gryffindor outfit. But I also, surprisingly, really liked the Ravenclaw outfit. I don't generally show that much skin, but I really freaking like that outfit. I really think I'm interested in like, 1950s sort of like summery fashion so i think i'm gonna start exploring that a little bit more and also i absolutely loved the slytherin look it is bringing me back to my love for 80s fashion so i'm definitely gonna make sure i'm incorporating more 80s fashion into my everyday style the hufflepuff outfit was cute not my favorite but it's a very wearable outfit all of them are i think but yeah let me know which one was your favorite beside that i hope you're all having a absolutely lovely week i hope you enjoy this upcoming weekend hopefully you get some time off from work and i am probably going to take next week off um just to give myself a second to breathe i'm currently working on the second thrifting for my subscribers video and it's just taking a lot of time those videos take me like probably i would say two months because i want to make sure i'm getting you guys like things you're actually going to wear so i spend my time going to thrift stores and thrifting on poshmark or depop so that that video should be coming maybe in the next month or so hopefully we'll have to see but beside that i love you guys so so much and i'll see you in two weeks don't forget it costs absolutely nothing to be kind so be kind to yourself and others bye